Welcome to my series on Poetry Analysis. Today I'll be introducing T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. On 18th December 1919, T.S. Eliot told his mother that he had made a new resolution. He was going to write a long poem that he had planned for a long time. Eliot was on the verge of a nervous breakdown and his doctor suggested that he better went to Margate, a seaside resort in the northeast of Kent, and later to Lausanne in Switzerland. It was here that he composed his famous poem, The Wasteland. But he composed the greater part of his poem in Switzerland. On his way back to London in early January 1922, he stopped in Paris and submitted his manuscript to Ezra Pound who edited and condensed and even gave a title to his long poem. Ezra Pound was the founder of Imagism and one of the most popular modernist poets during those times. It was he who shortened the length of the poem to 434 lines. T.S. Eliot's first wife, Vivian Eliot, also had a part in shortening the length of the poem. She wanted T.S. Eliot to remove the parts regarding their fractured marital life. Even though it had only 434 lines, Ezra Pound called The Wasteland the longest poem in the English language, owing to its density and concentration of meaning. Why could have Ezra Pound given such a title to the poem? Was it because the entire Europe had turned into a wasteland after the First World War? That could be just one reason. Another reason is because the poem actually predicts the fall of the Western civilization. So there's a huge loss in Western civilization. The Enlightenment was a failure and people no longer believe in Christianity. The values on which the Western civilization is built were not taken seriously. They were ignored. It could also mean a loss in spirituality. People no longer have a meaning or purpose in their lives. So the wasteland could also mean a barrenness of meaning and purpose. To understand the concept of the wasteland, let's look at the idea of modernism. According to Wikipedia, modernism in general reflected a departure from traditional forms of art, religion, philosophy, social organization and daily life which modernist artists felt had become outdated in the new environments of an emerging industrial world. Modernist art is known for its experimentation and the emergence of new isms like cubism, imagism, etc. T.S. Eliot uses the modernist technique of fragmentation. He uses fragmentation to represent fractured identities and discontinuous nat nature of modern life. Fragmentation also represents imperfection. Postmodern writers also use the technique of far fragmentation, but they celebrate fragmentation while modernist writers mourn over fragmentation. Fragmentation can also represent chaos. Fragmentation is an important theme when re while reading Wasteland. Another technique T.S. Eliot uses in his Wasteland is pastache. A pastiche is a work of visual art, literature, theatre or music that imitates the style or character of the work of one or more other artists. Unlike parody, pastiche celebrates rather than mocks the work it imitates. But in some cases, T.S. Eliot uses parody also. Ancient myth is the biggest source of this poem. Eliot borrows heavily from James Fraser's The Golden Bow and Jesse L. Weston's from ritual to romance. The myth of the Fisher King influenced T.S. Eliot a lot in creating the wasteland. According to legend, there was a curse and the Fisher King became sexually important. At the same time, the land he ruled also became barren. Only the virtue and courage of a brave knight can save the king and the land from impotency. The legend is used to connect sexual impotency and cultural degradation. From ritual to romance connects vegetation myths or fertility myths with the Christian grail myths. The holy grail 
is the sacred vessel from which Jesus drank wine during his last supper. The Wasteland was published in the Criterion in October 1922. The Dial in New York published it in November 1922. In the same year, it was published as a book by Bonnie and Liverwright. 1922 is a very important year for modernism. The novel Ulysses by James Joyce and another novel Jacob's Room by Virginia Woolf were also published in 1922. Now let's look at the epigraph of the novel. It is in Latin. It says, For once I myself saw with mine own eyes the Sibyl at Cumi hanging in a cage and when the boy said to her, Sibyl, what do you want? The next lines are written in Greek, I want to die. These lines are from Sactorion by Roman writer Petrorius Arbiter of the 1st century AD. The Sibyl referred to here is the Sibyl of Cumae who was given a boon by god Apollo who was her lover. When she asked for the boon, she asked for immortality but she did not ask for eternal youth. So she was condemned to live forever rotting as a very old lady. Her life itself was terrible. The only wish she had was she, that she wanted to die so she can escape from her state. Sibyls in Greek mythology are also women who can predict the future. But here she couldn't predict her own future. She was alive but she was dead just like the modern people in Europe who did not have a meaning or purpose in their lives. They live in a wasteland and wish they were dead. The next lines are a dedication to Ezra Pound, written in Italian, The Greater Craftsman. These lines are actually from Dante's Purgatory. T.S. Eliot later wrote about this dedication. I do not mean that Pound was only that, but I wished at that moment to honor the technical mastery and critical ability manifest in his own work, which had also done so much to turn the wasteland from a jumble of good and bad passages to a poem. The wasteland is divided into five parts. The first part is called the burial of the dead. The second part, a game of chess. The third, the fire sermon. The fourth, death by water. And fifth, what the thunder said. We will see a detailed analysis in the next video. Like and subscribe to Denver's Point of View YouTube channel.